guys, today we are going to learn how to build a D flip flop using Verilog code. As you can see, a D flip flop has three inputs D in, clock, and reset, and it has a single output which is out. Now, reset could be given in two ways it could be given in an asynchronous way that is not depending upon clock, and in a synchronous way that is depending upon clock. What they are and how will the circuit perform according to them? We will be seeing in a moment. We begin our program by defining a module named DFF asynchronous and synchronous reset and within that we define the inputs that are required by us. These are D1, D2, reset, output1 and output2 along with the clock. D1 and D2 are two inputs to show you that how the asynchronous and synchronous operation will work over the reset. Now we define which of the given ports are input and which of the given ports are output. D1, D2, reset and clock are the input ports while O1 and O2 are the output ports. Now we define the first condition that is asynchronous reset condition. For that, we just have to check the positive edge of the clock and if the reset is true then the output should be zero and if the re and if the reset is not true then on the every positive edge of the clock the output should be what the d1 is now the output is assigned only when the clock is high be it the reset or be it the input that is d1 now we begin writing the second part of a program by defining the sensitivity list of the second always loop as the positive edge of clock or the positive edge of reset. What this would enable is that this part of the program would run when the positive edge of clock is true or the positive edge of the reset is true. Now earlier if the positive edge of reset was true the program will not run until and unless the positive edge of the clock was received. But in this case, even if the clock is at the negative edge, the program will run without any problem. And same as above, we will define that if reset is true, the out2 will be 0 and if reset is not true, the out2 will be same as the d2. Now we will simply end our module and compile it. As the compilation was successful, now we will simply simulate our program. Now we will be defining a test bench for our above created program. We will be defining a module named dff underscore test bench and within that we will define all of the inputs used in the above program as reg and all of the outputs as wire. Now we will call the program for which the test bench is being made for. We will set the instantiation name as A1. Now we will initialize the values of all the inputs. For that we will define a initial procedural block and within that first of all we will write the dollar monitor system task and you can see the process of writing it right here. Now we will give the values to all of the inputs at different time frames.
now we will define the clock and simply end our module. We will now save the program and simply compile it. As you can see the compilation was successful. Now we will simulate it. As you can see here in the transcript window, even when the clock is 0, the OUTTO is still 0 as the reset is 0. This proves that the program is running fine. And here we can see that the OUT1 gets 0 when the clock is high again. This concludes our video. Thanks for watching.